Okay, y'all, we are here today celebrating Vile Ground, Georgia. That's all we're gonna celebrate today is the wonderful town that we represent. Um, I'm lucky enough to live in downtown Vile Ground. Miss Jenny is lucky enough to live in downtown Vile Ground. And you rounded up some newbies. Are we newbies? Yes. Okay, uh -huh. can you tell us mm -hmm. about your new friends? Yes, they are with the Garden Club, and this is Jim Colossa, and he has just joined our Garden Club this year, and uh, Teresa Dorflin, and uh, she's joined several years ago, Two but years Teresa's ago, uh -huh. in charge of our plant sale that we're having in June, mm -hmm. and Jim is in charge of the vendors and the festival. We're not only having a plant sale, but a plant sale and a festival. And I understand the festival, you have an opportunity to, number one, showcase your wares. So if you do something exceptional, if you make beautiful jewelry, if you um, design pottery, or if you have a restaurant in town, if you do all kinds of things and you're eligible to come and be there. That's correct, and Jim can tell you all these people he's already got lined up. Yeah, mm -hmm. can we talk about yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, they're nice enough to, to block off a street for us. So mm -hmm. um, we've got, in the vendor area, we've got everybody from Rock Solid Brewery to Feather's Edge Winery to mm -hmm. Barrel Age Coffee to, to the Burger Bus to Dominic's uh, Food Trucks to uh, Wilkes Meat Market and a number of people like you oh said. Oh my gosh, Wilkes Meat Market, the wings. Oh, the wings. I'll, I'll make sure <laughs> oh, they have the them for wings. you. Oh, the wings. They are fantastic. And, uh, yeah. and, and Burger Bus and a few other places. Uh -huh. We'll have between 20 to 30 booths. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, but also up behind the, uh, the city hall there, we're going to have an area for community tents. Uh, so everybody from the local churches, United Methodist Church. Or uh, local realtors. Local Absolutely. realtors. Local realtors yeah. that yeah. Uh, not-for-profit realtors. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, right. so that hopefully, you know, we, we've invited the, the police department, the cities, the Lions Club will be there. Uh, Funk's History Center will be there. So, like we said, it, it is a community mm -hmm. uh, festival event. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been, we moved uh, from Alpharetta to, uh, to here. Uh, you know, in 2014 and just fell in love with the town. Okay, when you left Alpharetta, what were you leaving? Uh, Fulton County taxes. Yes, yes, uh, because I deal with that not, every day yeah, in real estate. Because yeah. uh, I don't want to say what my taxes were there. Oh, I know, I've seen some of those tax you're, bills. when you're 62 years old or over in Cherokee County, mm -hmm. uh, I pay less than a thousand dollars a year for taxes. Yeah, yeah, I it's just, amazing. It's like getting a raise. It, it is almost <laughs> like, you know, um, you're fleeing, number one, traffic, yeah. and number two, you're fleeing, just just the craziness of, of having to deal with so many people at one time. But when you look at, as you get a little bit older, when your taxes are eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars a year, that's like a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And anyway, you look at it, you gotta pay your taxes. Yep. I think I realized late in life that you don't really own anything because forever you're paying taxes on it. <laughs> True. So yeah. now when you came from Alpharetta, were you retired? Uh, no, and uh, I'm kind of just partially retired right now. That's why I've got some more involvement with the ball, uh, the garden club. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you just walk by and join? Because most people get suckered in. They walk by and see it, and Jenny says, "Oh, we'd like to have a new member." <laughs> That's what we did with Jim. Actually, yeah. he went. He goes to the uh, coffee shop of a morning. And then he walks down to the garden and has his coffee. And so Beverly and I were working one day, and we saw Jim, and we told him what a wonderful garden club we had, <laughs> and how we developed this garden. We started in 2015, and now look at it. And we got him interested. He said, but I have to ask my wife. And we said, that's okay, just come to our next meeting. And, and, so, and he's been helping us ever since. Yeah, he has worked, yeah. he planted plants, he and his wife, Tina on the, at the uh, flagpole on Main mm -hmm, Street. Mm -hmm. And he did all of that and out at the Lions Club Park before he even joined the Garden Club. Wow. So he was working for us before he joined. Mm -hmm. But now he and Tina both are members mm -hmm. of the Garden Club. We enjoy that. It's, uh, I used to go there because last year was basically you couldn't have meetings. So I'd no. go to the park to have my, my Zoom meeting with people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all of these people came and interrupted my meeting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. So I love it. all of a sudden, the next it. weekend, I've got a hoe in my hand and beating up the ground and <laughs> learning a lot. But it's a phenomenal community, a great group of people. Well, I have seen these ladies age gracefully as they work themselves to death in this garden because they truly did. And, and Vicki and I laugh because we love the what we get to enjoy on it, but we've never done any of the hard work, but we have seen y'all. And <laughs> I'm telling you, they have put in five hard years yes. and uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort. And my, the funniest thing I ever saw at the garden is when Jenny found the first man 
who joined, and that was Danny, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Right. And, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, Danny's out there with a shovel, and you can see those ladies are shining and bright <laughs> and happy because they're no longer shoveling. Danny's shoveling. So <laughs> it was great to have a, the first man That's on board. Right. So, That's right. You know, it does make a difference because y'all are lifting rocks and you're moving things, and mm -hmm. it's a lot of effort, a lot mm -hmm. of effort. Well, it's amazing how much they have in it acre or so mm -hmm. and it, it's got a, a beautiful Japanese garden mm -hmm. that just takes your breath away. I've got an, an heirloom garden full of uh, plants that I can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a rock garden with a, an ele elephant ears that comes up out of something out of South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> They're putting in a Four Seasons garden so the uh, all flowers the all year there. Mm -hmm. There's a new god, uh, cottage garden with a nice white picket fence there. Mm -hmm. uh, a bog garden, which I'm not sure is yet what it is yet, but they got the most interesting plants. Any plants that like wet feet. Oh, okay. That that's, goes in the bog garden. We went, actually went down to Atlanta to the um, garden down there and the botanical garden, and the man told us how to plant the uh, bog yeah. garden, how uh -huh. to develop it with the sand and oh, the wow. peat and all of that. Wow. So, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. An herb garden, a native garden down there, and, and we have an area where we sell uh, bricks. That's so I, I have a brick for my, my father and my father-in-law now from mm -hmm. World War II. Mm -hmm. awesome. And so it's, it's just a, um, it just, you go like, where did this come from? I mean, I like Gibbs Garden, mm -hmm. but I think we took the 200 and, or 300 acres and put it yes. into an acre just as yeah, fine. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I really hope that y'all will do, and um, I, I showed Vicki and you'd die laughing. We rode by Highway 20 the other day and I said, there's where my garden used to be. And she said, Oh my gosh, that's huge. And I said, I know, I remember. And I remember coming out of there dead dog tired. But are, do you have any space that you could do a small vegetable garden to teach children to grow what they eat? That's a really good idea. We don't have anything like that. We have been looking at a children's garden, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure. There's only a few places with enough sun that hasn't been claimed. Mm. But that's probably a really good idea is we're looking at a partnership with Even one of the local schools. Even if you did a 20 by 20 space. Because yes. mm -hmm. one of the things that my kids and grandkids love to see was when you grow a radish, you don't really realize that you're getting this beautiful red thing, but you're looking for it when it's growing and it's under the ground. Yes. You know, so it was really cool. And then my favorite thing was to, to grow squash because one afternoon the kids are in the garden and they see these beautiful blooms and the next morning we go gather squash and they're like, where did that come from? Well, it came from that bloom, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. So I think just a small 20 by 20. That's yes, a great we idea. do have Absolutely. a blueberry, we have a little area that we got blueberry bushes and a fig bush. Mm -hmm. that at least we can tell them a little. But right, right in that area, it could be that That's we might right. we could develop really something right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there are winter <coughs> gardens when you do kale mm -hmm. and cabbage Absolutely. and things like that. So it's not just right. a once. You know yeah. what? We love people who have ideas. And we, we really appreciate that you've taken on the chairmanship of this committee. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we, we've let the public know that yes, you're really I will be in charge of this. Uh, yeah. now we'll, I'll, yeah. I'll help on the dig and you just give me the yeah. instructions on well, it. It, it was but. so weird when I did my first garden, <clears throat> I seriously was a city slicker and then I became a country bumpkin real fast and I was not about to tell my mother-in-law that I had no idea how to do a garden. Mm -hmm. And when she said go get some, do you know what Guranner is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fertilize. Walk in <laughs> what is a it? store Fertilize. Today. Oh. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. fertilizer that's no longer mm -hmm. even legal, is it? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we found all our children. Mm -hmm. Everything we fed them had <laughs> Guaraner in it. <laughs> That's why they're so weird, you know. But, but when she said, well, you need to stop by and get 20 pounds of Guaraner, and I thought, what in the crap is that woman talking about, you know. And I walked into the, um, I think it was Hinton Milling, and I just said, That's what I need, and I gave them a list. And then I looked and I thought, well, I'll be blast now. I know what it is. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. But I learned to can. I learned to make jelly. Mm -hmm. I did learn that if you make 550 jars of jelly and you think your kids and your family is going to eat that all, you are wrong. It's going to go back to sugar after it sits there 40 oh. years. You know, because it's not good. You can't eat that much jelly. But, but it is really cool. And y'all could even develop that garden to do a canning class. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you could do a, a, a canning class and teach people because preserving what you grow is just mm -hmm. as important. And it really is cool when you see the things that grow under the ground. You know, mm -hmm. you just, and carrots. Carrots are one of yeah, those that has this little frilly green, you know, on the top. And then all of a sudden there's this orange thing down there. And the taste is so much better. They yes, are so sure sweet mm -hmm. when you grow yourself compared mm -hmm. to what you get at the store. Right. I like to have neighbors that have vegetable gardens. Yes, like yes. too. Yes. They always yes. have too many tomatoes. But, you know, one of the things you brought up that after I got involved with a club is 
all the things they do with the community. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking to the, an elementary school about doing things and projects on that. And you, you know more, I mean, how many, oh, yeah. uh, what's well, some of the things we've we done? We donate also to like roadside beautification. Mm -hmm. We give to national disasters like Katrina. Mm -hmm. um, we do roadside beautification, did I already say that? And we do it twice. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We do it more. We've been doing it for years, actually. Now, let me ask you about the picnic tables that have just been out on Valley Street. Did y'all have anything to do with that? No, the city did that. that okay. Was, but that we're hoping to borrow that. those for our I festival. I love that they have those picnic <laughs> tables. I, I went by and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the so city's cool. been doing a great job. You know, they mm -hmm. put the sidewalk in mm -hmm. there with the fence up there alongside the road. It's awesome. There it is know. great. And yeah. right behind... Uh, the city hall um, they've got an area now for arbor day and we planted they planted a couple uh, huge red maples and mm -hmm. uh, i got a free dogwood out of it too so mm -hmm. it's very good mm -hmm. so uh, the community involvement uh mayor eric or mayor uh, rick and eric mm -hmm. and and uh, the folks in there have been very cooperative working with us they uh uh very supportive of, mm -hmm. of what we're doing on here and so. basically didn't you just walk in one day and say we have this idea well, first we wanted to put our bricks somewhere. We were mm -hmm. going to put them on Main Street where the flagpole was. Mm -hmm. And then they said, no, the, the railroad company owns that, so we can't put those there. And then Rick called me in one day and said, come in by yourself. I want to talk with you. And so I go in and he said, why don't you just do a botanical garden and put your bricks down here? And I thought, well, these little ladies, 70-year-old ladies with, you know, a botanical We might garden. say Jenny is the most spry and the youngest of the group. So, yeah. It's like, maybe we can do it. Well, I'll ask and see. And he said, well, if you will, we will do the 5013C. We have the city already has mm -hmm. that. We'll do it like we did our bell tower at the mm -hmm. city. They, mm -hmm. they sold sponsorships for that. Right. And uh, so he said, he said, you got to come up with an idea. Well, we had just done something for the... Um, landscapes and gardens grant fund historic mm -hmm. for the state of Georgia and we had a tour at Gibbs Gardens which it had just opened mm -hmm. and we were able to raise nine thousand dollars for that so we had done that with we came up with sponsorships so I said well we could do the same thing that we did for that mm -hmm. and so we had the thousand dollar five hundred to fifty hundred dollar sponsorships and we told people we would put their name on a kiosk not sure how this kiosk would look, mm -hmm. but then one day um, Evan Howell came down right. from Blue Ridge Marble and Granite, right. and we were telling him, and he said, I've got a piece of Cherokee marble I'll let you have. And then we told him what we wanted on there, and then we asked him, how much would that have cost? And he said, about $10,000. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> they, he said, but I'll give it. I said, we only have about $400 in our treasury <laughs> at that time. And he said, I'll give it to you. Yeah. So he brought it down with a crane and a truck, and they left that thing. And it was so interesting to watch because they put it. And did they carve it before down. they brought it? They cut, well, yeah. they carved what we wanted on okay. it, on the base. Mm -hmm. and uh, But the names is the people bought. Uh, well, some of the names, some of them we'd already sold, mm -hmm. so they etched all that on there. Now we use David Carver to put names on it if mm -hmm. someone wants to buy. Mm -hmm. We have two fifty and five hundred and thousand dollars spaces left, mm -hmm. and it cost um, eighty five dollars to maybe it's hundred and eighty five to get the name etched on on there. Mm -hmm. But we're still selling those, mm -hmm. and uh, so that so if somebody's gardens. interested and they want right. to remember and somebody, yeah, oh, especially yes. somebody who loved a garden. You know, yes. if your grandmother or your mother mm -hmm. or somebody. Um, and Vicky and I were talking about this when we passed by where my garden used to be. My mother-in-law's mother had the big dahlias, oh, huge, yeah. gorgeous dahlias on that property behind an old smokehouse. Well, years and years ago, the property was sold to a Chinese conglomerate. And I said, I always wanted to go back and dig up that earth because you know that those bulbs are still there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I said, not really want to go to prison. <laughs> I might take a shovel out there one day and risk it because it's still just sitting there. They haven't done anything with the property except purchase it. Huh. And I thought a shovel and, you know, you might just find those dahlia yes. bulbs. Yeah, so. and when we sent out those first sponsorship letters, we got the first thing we got was a donation from Kathy Day mm -hmm. and Marshall Day, and we were so happy. It's like, oh, this is going to work. I've really got a check here. <laughs> so they were the first ones, and that's why their names on there first under mm -hmm. the thousand dollar category. Mm -hmm. And then we had a nice fellow, uh, Doug Barrett, that donated eleven thousand. Right. And so, and another talking about big dahlias, uh, actually, um, Lee Grogan Jr. 
his mother lived right across the street from the Botanical Garden, or his grandmother. So in honor of her, he sent me a $1,000 check and said, please plant dahlias uh -huh. right there uh -huh. in memory yes. of her. Yes. So, and it's just such a good thing for memories. Mm -hmm. And we had a lady that had cancer in town, and she would come there and see it and just meditate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes her mother would come with her, and they would talk. And she told her husband, when I pass, I want my name on that monument. Wow, how and sweet. Oh, sweet. January of last year, he said she passed January the 5th and said Kimberly Blackwell. Mm -hmm. And he said, Steve said, I want to have my wife's name put on there. Mm -hmm. So we did. So it took us about May to get it on there, but we got it on there. And he was so happy to have that. Mm -hmm. So That's it's awesome. just a really good thing. And the last one I've got on the $1,000 side is uh, Andy Roach, Andy and Louise Roach, mm -hmm. and he passed away last week. Mm -hmm. so. Last week, I saw mm -hmm. that, yeah. Well, having our office in town, when people come in and say, you know, what are you doing, Ball Ground? I always say, well, you walk right down Valley Street and you have some time at the Botanical Garden. Number one, it's free, and it's just peaceful and beautiful. And I really haven't seen it when it didn't look good. Even in the dead of winter, I still enjoy going down there because mm -hmm. everything looks a little different, you know. The bones mm -hmm. are there anyway in the structure, mm -hmm. even oh, yeah, if the plants right. are not blooming. Yeah. We have bones and buried? <laughs> probably. <laughs> there may be. Probably. probably. Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> and Teresa's doing a cottage bed for us, mm -hmm. and we just got a new And what is a fence. cottage bed? What is well, that? a cottage garden. So it's really just a plethora of different flowers. We put up a picket fence, Monroe and his wife mm -hmm. uh, put that picket fence, built it, he built it by hand, mm -hmm. we installed that a couple of weeks ago. And so I'm adding flowers as the seasons allow. Mm -hmm. So I, I envision it as just a plethora of beautiful flowers, mm -hmm. just like an old English garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I love flowers, yeah. and so that's what I wanted to put there. You know, on magazine covers, you see the picket fence and you see where people mm -hmm. have all these gorgeous flowers. I bought those bags that offer all those seeds and, oh, oh. and I planted them. Not the first thing ever. <laughs> well, I have the blackest green thumb in history when it comes to flowers. Now gardening, I can grow a garden. I can grow corn, I can grow okra, I can grow but flowers like you're talking about, I had a vision of that too because mm -hmm. I was gonna have exactly what you said nothing came up. Is that right? <laughs> well, I tell you, I'm much better at flowers than I am at vegetable gardening, so. Okay, there you go. We have a partnership going there on you here. Go. There Absolutely. you go, there yeah. you go. Now, on June the 12th, you can have a plant sale. Y'all have been doing this plant sale for quite a few years, haven't yes. you? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Number one, the plant sale, or number two, if you are a business and you would like to be a part of this, and then local nonprofit groups can be there too. But let's talk about what they have to do to get involved because it sounds like your space is almost taken. So getting there, we're getting, getting there. there. We'll okay. make room. We'll be back in just a minute, guys. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. When traveling internationally, know where you're going and what the environment is. Also, don't dress to stick out. Dress to blend in with the environment and the culture. Make sure that you put minimal information on your luggage tags. The airlines actually track your bags, which you can follow through your app anywhere domestically and internationally. Also have a medical plan. We have mobilized rescue system. These systems are the only integrated medical technology that can integrate to your phone and be used abroad and domestically for any medical emergency that you have. If you have any questions or concerns about travel security or training, please contact Hypen International. 
Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, we are gardening in ball ground and we are growing in ball ground and um, the festival that's happening on June the 12th is it true this is the 70th anniversary of this garden club that's and you've true. been a member over 50 years 52 52 she years. She was two when she joined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she was two years Her old when she joined. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jenny was your mother a member? No she wasn't. No. Mm -mm. No, but some of David's relatives were members mm -hmm. of the Who were the first people you remember that said, Jenny Byers, we want you to come and join the garden club? Oh, my neighbor Elsie Cook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And her dad was uh, Jim Holcomb, who was the commissioner in the county back in the 40s and mm -hmm. the 50s. And yes, uh, she asked me. And to just good memories of Ms. Charles Malone, mm -hmm. Catherine Malone, and she was the first president. Mm -hmm. And Miss Georgia Quarles, who was a teacher also, mm -hmm. and she was uh, she was a precious lady that lived down below uh, ball ground, mm -hmm. uh, and then sort of a plantation there when you cross the Sharp Mountain Creek. Mm -hmm. And um, she was a pr she was precious. But I knew all of the uh, I guess all of the charter members, mm -hmm. although I didn't join until 1969, mm -hmm. but <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was organized in 1951. Wow. And the Tate Garden Club helped sponsor us. You had to have mm -hmm. another club, two clubs actually, and Etowah from Canton sponsored us. But uh, Amaclola kind of led the way and did the programs for us the first year. But mm -hmm. yeah, good memories of all of those sweet ladies. They mm -hmm. were just, most of them teachers and they were just, uh, just precious little ladies. Well, I set up a tea party here because one of my favorite things about that garden is the idea that ladies can gather there together and you can show up with a picnic basket with your tea service in it and some crackers and some da 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 and you think about that. And during the COVID time, we haven't been able to spend any time together. And I was thinking about the last time that you and Paula and me and Vicki, we all went somewhere and sat down and ate. I believe it was at the Woodbridge Inn the yes, night before it, it closed. Yes. The night before the Woodbridge Inn closed. And then after that, this stupid Chinese mess came to town and it changed all our lives. Mm -hmm. But now the garden would be a perfect place mm -hmm. to gather your tea set mm -hmm. And some crackers and some hot tea and just, you know, run down there and have a little tea party. Well, I guess I'll have to do that for Paula's birthday Monday. That's then. right. I mean, thinking, That's right. I can't get my house cleaned in time, so I'll yes. just get my china and go It down. would oh, really be a right. neat idea <laughs> yeah. to just yes. because the first day of spring is Saturday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would and be perfect. Monday. Yeah, yep. yeah, so, absolutely. Okay. And then everybody could bring their own chair and sit outside in the garden. And um, actually, the last time we were together was at the baby shower. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Down in the garden. Baby. It was a beautiful yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this garden doesn't just serve plants. It serves the community completely. It, it does. The historical societies had meetings there. The uh -huh. um, Lions Club, I'm not sure if they've had, but the Business Association, as a matter of fact, during this COVID thing, the Business Association met there mm -hmm. for several meetings. Mm -hmm. And then the um, pizza truck came down and served everybody and mm -hmm. the, they recognized the firemen. And so we just, yeah, we, we do other things than just go work ourselves. And, and you know, it. I think that's something COVID has taught all of us. We gotta look outside the box. Yes, you know, and you were right. talking about Zoom meetings. Can I tell you how bad I hate Zoom <laughs> meetings? I wanna be up close and personal. And even six feet, I'm good. I'm good with six feet mm -hmm. distancing. 
but those Zoom meetings are tough, and people have had to Zoom with their grandparents, Zoom with their children. Yes, yes. It's very tough. And so if you're used to hugging your mama or giving your dad a big handshake when you see him, and you can't do that, you know, so it's been so different. Mm -hmm. And that's what made our plant sale last year successful. Yes. Teresa did a wonderful job organizing it. And uh, just as uh, we, we only had about two weeks to plan it, well, we planned some, but we didn't think we could have it. Mm -hmm. And then we decided, well, maybe we can. So we started putting it together. And actually, the very weekend, they lifted some of the COVID restrictions, and everybody came yes. out. Yeah, awesome. really nice yes. turnout. Yes. Beautiful yeah. day. It it's was gorgeous. just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And basically, the funds that you raise, um, number one, operate to grow the garden and to do all the other things you talked about in the community. And when people are donating the money, do you have um, any a big wish list for next year? Is there something really glamorous and wonderful you'd like to do? Well, I don't know how glamorous it is, but we want to redo a path mm -hmm. that needs to be 36 inches wide for mm -hmm. the handicap. Right. We've got to do that. We've got our Four Seasons Garden, which we hope to have something blooming every season mm -hmm. in it. We've got irrigation, we have a problem there. We really need to have that done. Mm -hmm. And we want to put a patio at the back of the pavilion. And we want to have steps when you go across the bridge, the little stream, mm -hmm. to be able to go up to the butterfly garden and have some steps there. And mm -hmm. Jim's already talked with someone about mm -hmm. that. So we've had a lot of erosion there. <coughs> mm -hmm. So there's a lot of roots and it's a little dangerous. We don't want somebody to fall. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, some structural issues that we that really need to be addressed. Well, that walkway was one mm -hmm. because my mother fell. She got her heel caught on a rock somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then when I was walking on the garden that day, I think it was the day of the shower, I said, oh, this isn't too safe. Mm -hmm. You know, right, and it, it isn't so it needs to be made safe so everybody can mm -hmm. enjoy it. So that's what we're, we're hoping to raise the money from the plant sale this year with our festival. Mm -hmm. We've yourself. got a new shed, and we need to landscape around it. We Is it a she shed or a he shed? Well, it's a <laughs> shed or a she shed. It's a nice shed. Well, he said it's a she shed, <laughs> by the seashore, but you know, like you're going a couple of things with that. You know, I'm telling people unofficially that on June 12th. We're not allowing COVID in ball ground anymore. That's so right. We're I'm having a festival you. to celebrate yes. that. And I haven't heard anybody that just didn't scream happy yeah, on that. Yeah, so absolutely. That's it. <laughs> one of the things you talk about is a garden. And um, a lot of the uh, members have some phenomenal gardens, uh, Japanese gardens. And we. one of the things that we'd like to do is if, if you have a garden with some plants in it where you have too many mm -hmm. irises or too many of something, small plants, we mm -hmm. don't want to move a tree. <laughs> uh, we do harvest those mm -hmm. and we do rescue those. So if somebody has the uh, a need to uh, rescue some plants, we'd love to come out because that's how we make our money. These plants are, you know, there's some store bought, but most of them came from our backyards or mm -hmm. from the garden and mm -hmm. transposed. And you can go through the list of the plants, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, from uh, m monkey grass and the technical name for it is. Mm -hmm. Larope. There you go. La yeah. Larope. 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 Uh, Larope. To irises, Larope. to uh, uh, Mexican petunias, which are an interesting plant mm -hmm. where every day the f it puts up a new flower and at night the flower falls off. Right. Larry Dodson gave us some of those mm -hmm. that were oh, in yes. Flora's garden. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh, so they're beautiful. Yes. Mine keeps uh -huh. spreading. Yes, so yes. Not yes. enough to get so to the garden yet. <laughs> yeah. Most of these plants have mm -hmm. come from other people's gardens. They've yeah. been mm -hmm. lo lovingly mm -hmm. um, tended and uh, harvested. And so that's what we're looking. We actually have a team put together that that do uh, digs, we call mm -hmm. them a dig, and uh, we go and we help separate some of their plants and mm -hmm. we sell those at the plant sale. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what, how we get our money. That's And that's how I learned to do this. My Aunt Tempe would always say, it's time to get out and thin. The, and I'm yes. like, really? What are you doing that for? It's spring. They're going to be coming up. They're going to bloom. She said, oh no, they need room to breathe. Yes. You know, I'm yes. like, okay. So. They bloom so much better when they're separated. Yeah. Well, a few years ago, I was on the air and I said, oh, I want some new purple iris. I want some this. I want some that. And I got off the air that day and I walked out here and a lady had brought me a dish oh. pan full where she had unloaded amount of her thinning her garden and every year when they come up I smile and I think about her yes. because mm -hmm. she brought colors I didn't have you know and it was so exciting to see them because I'm watching them and then what color are they going to be and uh, she brought I think there were three different colors that I didn't have so yeah. that's really cool and yep. you remember the old-fashioned plants, the touch me nots that mm -hmm. we took a tour up. You to remember, Tennessee yes, <laughs> and got some seed from a little lady. Yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how this happened. I just pulled in this lady's yard. I had an, a car full of old ladies and me, <laughs> the old lady extraordinaire, and we pulled in and I said, "Oh, whoa, look, look!" And we got out there and just started talking to these people in Murphy, North Carolina. 
<laughs> and I said, oh, these are the ladies from the garden club, and we're out here looking for plants. And, and she said, well, let me show you what I got. Before we left, we had so many seeds. It was unbelievable. Oh, isn't that wonderful? It was oh, awesome, and it was just riding through. We were actually looking for the dinner plate dahlias that I had seen at an old home place, and sadly, the old home place had sold, and they took down the picket fence, and the dahlias were gone, too. But that's why we were on that road. And so as we turned around to come back, I said, oh, <laughs> and I just walked in there and I know the lady was like, and the old man, do you remember him sitting mm -hmm. on the porch and he was telling us about how long they'd lived there and whatever. But flowers are a connecting force because if you love them and you love them and you have them in your yard and you stop, then it connects you with somebody, yes. you know, and we have those mm -hmm. pictures. Lucille was with us, right. and, uh, and their zinnias were really pretty that day, remember? Mm -hmm. And I've got oh, pictures yeah. of you mm -hmm. out there with them. Mm -hmm. And it was just, we were looking for touch-me-nots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that was because it was my granddaddy's favorite flower. And I think Jenny and I were talking about everybody's yard used to have touch-me-nots, mm -hmm. and then nobody's yard had touch-me-nots. Mm -hmm. Right. What happened to them? They just die out. After a while, because I thought mine would come up forever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they didn't. I guess yeah. a hard freeze, probably one winter, uh, yeah. got them, yeah. and they never came up again. Yep. And it was like, well, I didn't save seed, and I regretted that. And yep. then when I started asking people, because you don't you don't see that at the box stores. No. Right, and right. Uh, it was just something that was almost gone, mm -hmm. and I'm just so happy to have it. And yeah. I, believe me, I save seed we every got it. now. Yeah, we got them. Um, something else I was thinking about mm -hmm. that um, came up from seeds. When I was little in the fifth grade, we had to do a science experiment, and it was to grow something. And I grew zinnias, and I learned that you better read on the pack, because I grew some about this big the first year, and the next year I grew some huge ones. They were beautiful, but um, they kind of look like a Gerber daisy, mm -hmm. and the zinnias will last longer and prettier. The Gerber daisy is like two days shelf life. If you pick it and put it in water, it doesn't look very good for a couple of days. But you learn about those old timey, they're standard, they're sturdy, they're strong, and they last forever. Mm -hmm. They last forever, but you have to take care of them, and you have to feed them, and you have to nurture them, and and that's what y'all are doing, you know. Right. We actually have um, a member just gave me a giant bag of seeds from hers from last year that we're going to be plant. So we'll have that col those colorful pots to sell to mm -hmm. at the plant sale. Do but you know what's in those seeds, or is it a, a guesstimate of what's in there? Did she mark everything? You mean the colors? Mm -hmm. Oh, there it's a variety of colors. Okay. Yes. So she doesn't have. We don't have the exist. You know the exact colors. But so are what are they? Zinnias? Zinnias or and you know? marigolds. Those yeah. Are yeah. marigolds. Yeah, there's yeah. just zinnias in there. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a. She also gave me a bag of marigolds, but it's just the giant zinnias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I seen them in her yard They're last so healthy year. They're and hardy. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. So we'll be. I'll be planting a lot of those up too to sell um, some beautiful, colorful. You know popcorn. a word y'all have never said. What? Snapdragon. Oh, my yes. favorite flower is the snapdragon. Right? Mm -hmm. My grandma Dobbs had beautiful, tall, sturdy snapdragons. And now when you go in the store to buy them, they don't have those big, beautiful, old-timey ones. They still have them. They just them. have the small ones. Yes. 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 And yes. I have gotten some of those and tried them in the heirloom garden that didn't do well. Why? I've gotten, I don't know, in the foxglove, I've gotten mm -hmm. some of those. And let's see, what is the other one that grows up on the tall stem, the old-fashioned one? Garden oh. Fox? Oh, not, um, well, I can't think of what I'm trying to say right now. But anyway, all of those. What about the volunteer <laughs> petunias? Do y'all remember volunteer petunias? Yes. We saved some. Okay. <clears throat> Behind our house, they graded for it to build some more houses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, so we dug some up. We found some. They were blooming up there, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we dug them up and brought them. And David just nourished them and taken care of them, and so they're still there. And we and I saved seed from that mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. hopefully, yes. there yes. will be some that we can plant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Teresa started a, a website for us, and we're maintaining that. So it is ballgroundgardenclub.com, uh, mm -hmm. and so we have the events section on there. One of our members, Jim Bird has a little That's video. That's three men. Are there more than three men? Oh, we there? got five men. Five I, men. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> I thought I'd five we're, golden shovel yeah. awards. Yeah. <laughs> right. we, we started a basketball team. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, um, but it's a ball ground garden club. Uh, under the events, it talks about and who's coming. Uh, but we have a little gallery there of photographs of everything. But Jim Bird put together a little uh, little video on there, and it is gorgeous. Yes, mm -hmm. and we won a state and a national award for it, yeah. too. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, That's so cool pretty. Well, there are so many garden clubs. There's 50 or 100 garden clubs in Georgia alone. Uh -huh. The Garden Club of Georgia has, I think, 10 to 20,000 members. So it's mm -hmm. not an insignificant group. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and mm -hmm. uh, they're all doing things together on there. But it's uh, um, what, what's you know you're, what's I'm getting the kick out of this is what we do every time we're together. We're learning more about the history of the of mm -hmm. ball ground, the mm -hmm. 200 years of history from the Longmark Swamp. Uh, the last Indian battle was over mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you know, 200 years ago, and. Uh, right. And that's just, uh, you know, there the, were third and fourth generation people that knew, oh yeah, this is where I grew up with, mm -hmm. and this is the doctor's <laughs> house I grew up with. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so I feel like this is my hometown. Mm -hmm. I'm from Michigan, mm -hmm. so that's why I have such a, sick, a thick accent. <laughs> yeah. um, He's a Southern yeah. Michigan boy. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was Southern Michigan down there if you're from Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, now tell people about the official name of the Garden Club. And how oh, and that's the Gada. Yes. That is the uh, Cherokee language. This, that means ball ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I decided one time, maybe I better confirm this, and Jeff Stansel, who was in charge mm -hmm. of New Echota. I had had time. him on before several really? times, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, he actually said, well, I'm sure it is, but if you'd like to talk to Hastings, he's the chief of Cherokee, the Cherokee Nation. Oh so my we God. talked with him and it was like, okay, this is close enough. I'm not gonna go there. Mm -hmm. Annette Gada is close enough for ball grounds. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, I, so I guess awesome. I was writing the history and I thought, well, somebody had said, now they weren't so sure that meant ball ground. Mm -hmm. But in talking with him, I thought that this is close enough. That's so. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, when we think about the history of the Cherokee and uh, we know the sad story, um, is there something in the garden that says this was once upon a time Cherokee soil? No, but we need that. Yeah, that would be a good you thing absolutely to do. We need, talk with the city. You need or something that says the Trail of Tears started very close to here, yes, and, right. and 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 in memory of. Mm -hmm. By the ball ground uh, park, there is a big uh, granite statue there, mm -hmm. and they're going to be putting it in uh, Valley Street, where all the picnic tables are going mm -hmm. over there. So it's expanding out there. So it is. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. And I would love yes. to see a. a um, statue of Nancy Ward mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, with the Battle of Taliwa, uh, she was the one, her husband got killed and she picked up the gun and carried on and rallied them on and that's why the Cherokees won and the Creeks had to secede and go mm -hmm. south of the Chattahoochee River. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Cherokees stayed there. Mm -hmm. So I would just love to see a statue yeah, of her on fun. the little mm -hmm. mound mm -hmm. there well, the, next the to her. The battleground <laughs> was where, right where uh, 372 goes over the Etowah River right. and the history in that is just uh, is unbelievable. Yep. So it's uh, it's it is interesting. You know that, that's one of the things that draw you know that drew me to it. They have the history group that gets together and talks about mm -hmm. it. Well, the name Ball Ground. Mm -hmm. You know where did that come mm -hmm. from? Mm -hmm. And you know that was where the Cherokee or the Indians, the five uh, uh, they, they call them the five civilized nations, would have a uh, a battle. And I think it was like a seven day, twenty four hour battle in the valley in the valleys. And it was a combination of lacrosse and and polo. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would have big bonfires, and the winners of it uh, would win property, you know, 5,000 mm -hmm. 5, acres from the Etowah. <coughs> and then after one of the battles, that's where they, they somehow somebody got upset, and the Cherokee beat the creek, and the creek moved down to Macon, <laughs> and mm -hmm. now we have, <laughs> we have ball ground. That's awesome. So, uh, Does he know my daughter's name? No. Mm -mm. Well, my daughter. And I'll just say this, I don't drink anymore, but I used to drink. <laughs> and 40, 40 years ago when my daughter was coming along into life, her grandfather wrote a book on the history of the Cherokee, and he passed away the week that she was born. So I'm sitting there, and I might have had a couple of beers when I was doing this, <laughs> and I said, what am I going to name this baby? And I said, well, if it's born in the morning, I'll name it. Cherokee Dawn after her grandfather's book. Mm -hmm. And if it's born at night, I'll name, it, I'll name it Shawnee Dusk. And my friend Vicki says all the time, I'm so glad that you don't drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Shawnee Dusk, and then she t said the other night, she said, you could have named her Apache Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> But I laughed because Dawn loves her name. Her name is Cherokee Dawn. And many years ago, we had a store in Jasper, and a lady came in, and she was from Oklahoma, and she was writing a check. And I looked down at the check, and I said, what does that say? I said, it says your name is Cherokee Dawn. And my daughter was back in the back of our store, and I called her up there, and I said, Dawn, come here, come here, come here. I said, look at this lady's check. And she looked at the lady just dead serious, and she said, you cannot be Cherokee Dawn. I'm the only Cherokee Dawn in the world. You cannot be. <laughs> and the lady said, how old are you? And Dawn said, like 23 or something. And the lady said, 
bingo, got you, I'm 31 or whatever it was. <laughs> you know? And it just broke her heart because all her life she has loved the uniqueness of her name and it was because of her grandfather and his history. And his, um, his book is called The Trail of Tears. And um, no, Cry of the Eagle, and it was over the Trail of Tears. But in the Cry of the Eagle, he had a fifth grade education, and he wrote this simple, simple book. But all of Dawn's life, she has been obsessed with Cherokee, and she mm -hmm. still is. She still tries to find out about their history and, and digging and, you know, the things that her family taught her. But one of the great things about the Cherokee is they had tea parties, too. You know, they were not a... Um, one of the things that you find on some of the digs in Cherokee property is they had beautiful china. They had beautiful things and you don't think about it. You think right. of maybe an Indian as very rustic and you know, but, but that wasn't the way at all. And I don't know how they got their china, but when you visit the Chief Van House, you see a lot of beautiful things and, and those were from the Cherokee Nation. It's we amazing. We keep thinking about Indians out west, but mm -hmm. right. that's not so. And wagon Cherokees, trains. Yeah, yes, yes. the Cherokees were very cultured people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. <coughs> and and often very wealthy. And then there were those that were removed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they, yeah. Large plantation owners, they mm -hmm. owned gold mines. Right. They had right. slaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's an interesting history. I'm reading a book by Fred Ward. Forrest Wade, and I Forrest think that's who she's Forrest talking Wade, about. That's my grandpa. He was that's telling my just reading the book. This, this, yeah. I'm just reading the book. Yeah, that's my daughter's about grandfather. My well, there you yeah. go. I'll have yeah. to yeah. have you come in. Uh, on the way up here. He and was telling when you me read reading. it, you think about he had a fifth grade education, but his knowledge of the Cherokee was unbelievable. And he, he spent his life, I will say he wasn't much of a workaholic, but he was a <laughs> walkaholic. And he would walk the woods for hours and hours every single day. Yep. And he taught Dawn's father that. And so that's what they, it was all about the Cherokee. And she can show you now saddle tree or this or this, yep. you know, and it's because of the history of, of that. Hmm. And um, it's amazing the things that happened within a 40 mile radius of Ball Ground, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't read that book, the library has it. And I think somebody told me it was one of the most checked out books at the library. Cry the Eagle. Well, it was, yeah. uh, I just got that for my birthday, so uh, oh, that's my awesome. wife found a couple books like that. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. that, cool. that. Ah. that is cool. Yeah. That is cool. That is cool. Okay, Jenny, what else do we need to encourage people to do to become part of the Ball Ground Garden Club? Can Are you looking for members? Oh, yes. Oh, we we have, members. actually, we have grown by 11 members since August. That's awesome. So, yes, <clears throat> we've got 47 members now. And uh, when we reach 50, we'll be a large club, according to Garden Club of Georgia. Mm -hmm. but Does that change your status with? Just with our awards competition. Okay. okay. But that's all. But yes, we, we like to have members. And now, I understand uh, Paula's doing a new mm -hmm. iris for the new yearbook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each year we get a new yearbook for the mm -hmm. members, mm -hmm. members yearbook. And yes, she's painting an iris for us, and you went to go cover my mm -hmm. sister. And, and what does that book feature? What does it talk about? Well, it gives um, every, the history of the club and lets us know to our, when our meetings are going to be, and we have committees. Uh, so if you join the garden club, you're you get a you choose a committee that you want to serve on, mm -hmm. and different ones. Uh, we have, of course, finance, which. <laughs> She's our new treasurer. Uh, we have finance. We have uh, the botanical garden. We have projects. Just different, different committees. And well, uh, we a, have all that I got something y'all need to do. You know what today is? <coughs> it's stimulus day. People got oh, extra money. I tell you, send yes. out an email blast today and say, with your stimulus money, commit one hundred dollars to the Garden That's Club of Ball Ground. Just mm -hmm. send out a blast. Everybody got their money today. <laughs> And say hundred bucks, hundred bucks, hundred bucks, hundred bucks. Right. Forty-seven. That's forty-seven hundred dollars. You I just made you, just like that. <laughs> you know what? Um, we are. She's got all the ideas. We need I to make know, her an honorary I member. Know. We need to be a member. And just for, her, her, ideas. for her knowledge. Yes. yes you know, that's one of the things with new members is they bring is they bring um, new, ideas, new ideas, new life mm -hmm. into the club, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been fun. I've been with the club for two years. And uh, I've never run a plant sale before. I learned a lot last mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. And Jim uh, and I've kind of um, worked together Partnered a lot to, this. <laughs> to really create this as not just a plant sale, but a fun event for mm -hmm, ball ground. Mm -hmm. We love ball ground. And we're really looking forward to having this kind of a celebration for the town. Mm -hmm. And this uh, makes me so happy to have people. This is why with new people that come into town and to see them get excited about ball ground mm -hmm. and because yes. it's my hometown oh, yeah. and for them to come yes. and enjoy it and make it their hometown, yep. it's just wonderful. And yes. for their I remember being about eight years old, I think, and my grandmother and I were at Cora Hubbard's store, 
and I remember the ugliest pair of shoes I ever saw, and, and she, <laughs> Granny thought they were cute, and I said, oh, no, they're ugly. And you got to think about it, eight-year-old kids, you know, kind of independent little heathens. <laughs> but I can remember standing there at the doors we were leaving and those ladies and how, how precious they were. And there's so many precious people from ball ground mm -hmm. that y'all didn't get to meet and mm -hmm. you didn't get to know. My grandmother, I have a picture of her hanging in my office and she and Jewel Hubbard were riding horses out on the Etowah River and um, somebody took a picture of them. And my grandmother was, I think, about 16 years old then. And I, I think then it was a, a dirt, Main Street was dirt at that time. Just past the Wheeler House on out, not very far, it changed, yeah, the pavement just went that far. Yeah, then it was dirt. and, and, and it, out of respect for Jewel, she was standing there next to my grandmother and she had a cigarette in her hand. <laughs> and women didn't smoke then, but she did. Hmm. And so maybe she was sneaking and smoking, but when I saw <laughs> that, I didn't, I didn't make a copy of her picture and put it up in my office because I thought a lot of people didn't know that she did. Oh, <laughs> so, but it was so funny because they were so prim and proper and amazing ladies, just okay. precious, precious ladies. And that was my grandmother's best friend growing up. And Jewel was from a very affluent family and my grandmother's parents were tenant farmers. So they were very opposite, but they were the best of friends all their life. You know, and I said, it's yes. a really cool memory. Well, it's funny how, Spock is uh, speaking about how they were prim and proper, you know, I just took over the treasury for the Ball Ground Garden Club, and I'm going through all the old records. I have boxes of all the old stuff. <laughs> and all of the member listings had the husband's name, mm -hmm. which, you know, is so unusual now. But Mr. and Mrs. Jim, whatever. Yes, Mr. and they were yes. like Jenny wasn't referred to as Jenny. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. David Byers. Mrs. David Byers. Yes. And you know, it just took me back. That yeah, you yeah. forget that that was just not long ago. No, no, mm -hmm. no. How far yeah. women have come. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and if you'll notice, it was in the 70s. I changed that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but, but it was only until the <laughs> 70s. Until the right. 70s, oh, the it was 70s. still like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. It yeah. was this until then, because I was one of the first. Their Ladies' Day this month. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, it's interesting I, yeah. to see yeah. you know, yeah. how mm -hmm. far it's oh, come yeah. from mm -hmm. when the garden, I think some of the records, there was, uh, like I was talking to one of the garden ladies, it's been Sue, mm -hmm. that's Sue Urbatus, who's been with the club for a while, and she says, you know, we were, used to be just an 18 club. We used to have mm -hmm. 18 members. Mm -hmm. She says, now, look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. mm -hmm. Come from 18 to 47. Yes, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. I, will, mm -hmm. I tell you, I've learned so much from the ladies and the gentlemen that uh, work, that uh, volunteer at the club. That's, mm -hmm. you know, I think gardeners are happy people. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. being outside and it's being around flowers. It's a place of peace. It's a place, it's a of, place peace. of peace, but yeah. it's a place of happiness. Mm -hmm. And everybody mm -hmm. that works in the garden or is part of the garden club seems to have that inner peace, inner mm -hmm. comfort. Um, and I love that. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy mm -hmm. that a lot. Since I retired, that was um, something that I was looking for, as so I like to do that myself. Now, have y'all been in town long enough to know about the Laura May Mitchell house? No, no, Jenny. You mm -hmm. have to tell them well, we'll, a little bit I'm of history so much about I have it. To tell them. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I love talking about the house across from the library. Yes, it has oh, the it's being post. restored right oh, now. Oh, it's yes. being restored now, and yeah. it's right. going to uh -huh. open in April, and it's going to be a very, very special gathering place. And um, I can't wait for you to see it finished. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And a dear um, friend that I met, who is actually. New York, Connecticut bread mm -hmm. is going to turn it into an amazing event place. Is that And you're going right? to love it, love it, love oh, it, love it. I love right. that. And it's going to give people an opportunity to see the house that everybody who comes to town says, why is that house sitting there looking like it looks? Why is that house sitting there in such rough condition? Why is that house? And now Lee Lusk is turning it into, he and Brittany have put magic on it, and it's going to be just absolutely beautiful. It's been a great oh, job at it. Yes, it's, yes, great yes. it's going to be absolutely beautiful. And I said I can't wait until one of the things Nancy did was she brought an arborist in to manage and maintain that gorgeous tree, and they've done the history oh, on that okay. tree, and it is, the Garden Club needs to have an event there. That just surrounding that tree and you need to bless that tree because it is just fantastic. We'll tell her to get it developed by this fall and we'll mm -hmm. celebrate our 70th anniversary. Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> and she's going to have a garden around that tree. That's mm -hmm. her big thing is that she wants people to enjoy that gorgeous tree oh, because it's that. beautiful. It's I just beautiful. That. Well, in the, in the park there's a uh, over a 200 year old oak mm. that just is you know mm -hmm. almost as, as big as that that table. But you were talking, uh, we'll be working in the garden, and there, there, there's been weddings there. Mm -hmm. uh, people come with their kids. A lot of the high school 
uh, girls were there getting their photographs mm -hmm. on the bridge. Absolutely. And yeah. so I'll ask them, I said, well, up the hill here, that's one of the Rosalind Carter uh, butterfly gardens, because we have one that's shaped like a mm -hmm. butterfly, and it's part of a national trail. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, who's Rosalind Carter? I know. Uh, I and know. I'll say, it's, oh, it's yeah. Jimmy Carter's wife. Who's, well, who's Jimmy, Jimmy Carter? Carter? <laughs> <laughs> and so just the the lack of history is yes. just amazing. So, you yes. know, it, but it brings it up, and, and then we talk about the history of the garden, how long it's been here, and mm -hmm. it's really a uh, we're putting together uh, during the event, we're going to have a tour of the garden, a little mm -hmm. 15, 20 minute one. They go into the the, uh, just the background of, uh, of the, of the like the Rosin Carter uh, mm -hmm. Butterfly Garden. We have something with those, we have toys around the big old, I forget what the name of the oh, event. Yes, we, we have tiny doors. doors. The, the tiny, tiny doors, doors. Uh -huh. yes. So, yes. Little, so, and so kids can come and play with all the little uh, mm -hmm. gnomes and fairies. There's yeah. hundreds of little features up there and it just, in the, and they can, they can touch them yeah, and play yeah. and get And get his dirty. wife, Tina, has just updated and added some more to every little crevice around the bottom mm -hmm. of, the tea, mm -hmm. of the tree there. So, yeah. And who remembers the song playing in the dirt again? Pike Nurseries. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I met the gentleman who wrote that song, and I had him on the program. And, and we've interviewed Charlie Pride, um, Aaron Tipp, and all these move, uh, uh, country music stars. But my daughter was more impressed by the man who wrote Playing in the Dirt Again. Mm -hmm. Because when she was little, I would put her in her wagon, and we would go outside, and I would plant and work in the garden. And she would sit there and watch me, and she loved that song. And she would always hum that little song, Playing in the Dirt Again. And when we met him, he was like, man, I still get royalties off that song. That <laughs> you know, and it was written many, many, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. But there's something about playing in the dirt again, yes. you know, and number one, the minerals are healthy for you yes. and your kids are healthier if they get out there and get dirty and, you know. Now, what about chemicals? Do y'all use a lot of chemicals in the garden no. or do you not? We don't use any Roundup in the garden, mm -hmm. um, so we're really adamant about doing that. So we really have a lot of weeds to pull. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we focused on last year is because recently, this, the plants that last year was probably the the best fundraiser that we had. So mm -hmm. we actually had some money mm -hmm. to start putting back in the garden. So we're able to really heavily mulch things, mm -hmm. uh, which saves all of our backs every year pulling. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the same idea with the plant sale this year. This is our mm -hmm. major fundraiser. And but getting some of that new hardscape in, like you mentioned, the path. Mm -hmm. Um, and one thing you know, I wanted to bring up is, the, uh, again, the website, ballgroundgardenclub.com. If they're interested in joining the club, if they're interested in donating, all that is on the website. Mm -hmm. And we are going to, we have applied for our 5013C status, so it will be a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So any donations will also be uh, tax, deductible, tax deductible, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't been able to do that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to grow with the times. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll actually be able to take credit cards at our plant sale this year. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds like a, that sounds like a funny yeah. thing, but you know, we're, we're a small group. You know, yeah, we haven't yeah. been able to do anything like that. Yeah. So yeah. I think with some new people coming in, new ideas, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're able to kind of jump through a little electronic window, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And Jim's going to work on getting us some sponsors, also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting sponsors, people. getting people. It, this is, a, like we said, a community event. If you haven't been to Feathers Edge Winery, mm -hmm. you got to go there. It's beautiful mm -hmm. artwork. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful area. Um, it takes you back into the '70s a little bit. Mm -hmm. Rock Solid Brewery is. Um, I'll, I'll put it up against Reformation. It's packed. Oh, and it's packed all the time, too. And, uh, you know, yeah. you want a good pizza, Dominic's or, or Rosario's is great. Pizza. The Frankfurt yeah. uh, Meat Market, they've got they have a, one of the best gyroses in the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. And the Reuben's not bad. You mm -hmm. go to the Le Trabone, um, if you want some good Cajun stuff. Yeah. Yep. So shrimp you're not going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's our favorite, basket. It? Yeah, that's, our, that's what we always order. Yeah. Well, and they, they have, have a great hamburger, there, so. too. They have a wonderful hamburger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. the burger bus uh, is yeah. going to be at the event there, too. And they, that, that just stops people on the track. You know, what is that bus mm -hmm. by the railroad track? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what stops a lot of people. Said, well, i got to eat at the burger bus oh, and yeah, start starting yeah, on that. Yeah. So. And, you know, like the picnic tables uptown, last week they were awful. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Even on Wednesday, people were sitting out there. And I was looking around because, you know, Wednesday in small towns, you know, we mm -hmm. used to roll up the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. used to close. Noon, the you closed, closed everything. And yeah. now Wednesday in ball ground is busy. And I'm like... Holy cow, you know, it's what crazy. has happened. I yeah, know, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We, lived, awesome. we moved here three years ago, and I tell you, just the growth in those three years mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. been uh, quite phenomenal. So. Yeah. Now, do you know where Flat Bottom Road is? Yes. Do you know where Cons Creek Road is? Yes. You've been here long enough. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 
it is amazing to me because Flat Bottom is my favorite road. Okay. I, I take people on a circle tour of ball ground, and I end up from I go Flat Bottom, then I get on Cons Creek, then I go to Yellow Creek, then I turn around oh, and come okay. back, and that's okay. my tour. And they're like, "How far is this from town? One mile." Really? All this is this close to now? Yes. Then I take them to Concrete. How far is this? Eight miles. Wow, just eight miles. And, and so I do that tour. And um, the Cons Creek area is where Forrest Wade's um, wife and her family grew up. And he's actually buried at Cons Creek. So there's a little history for you. There you go. Who was his yeah. wife? Interesting. Dorothy, okay. Dorothy was a... Um, Howell. And oh, yes. do you remember okay. Mr. Carroll Howell? Yes, I do. He That's was in my office when Uncle we got Carol. robbed one time yes. at the bank. Oh, yes. He was in my office with Uncle me. Uncle Carroll was Dorothy's older brother. Oh. And then Jess Howell over in Jess. Cumming, who does transmission work or did transmission mm -hmm. work. Um, his boys, I think, still do. But a lot of history, a lot of family history. So go to the old cemeteries. That's what I want y'all to do. Oh, and that's yes. one of the places. You can still see this time of year a little bit of thrift coming around some of the graves where people put thrift many, many years ago. And everybody, remember Jenny, everybody had a bank of thrift in mm -hmm. front of their yard? Yes. Oh, they don't do that. that anymore. Oh, I have one in the front of my yard. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, I do too. We have, yeah. I just put in, um, in the cottage garden that I'm working on, it uh -huh. was a lot of thrift. Uh -huh. So I pulled a lot of that thrift up, and I have probably about 20 pots for sale uh -huh. for the, at the garden awesome. club. Awesome. It'll be from that. But uh, it's just so lovely. But it it's is. one of those plants that have to be thinned out uh -huh. if you want it to look uh -huh. really nice. Uh -huh. But and one of my favorite plants. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. If you turn on Blackwell Street, the, the house there on the uh, right, uh, was it the Anderson House, mm -hmm. where Sylvia Bowles lives now? Right. You'll see thrift along the yes. back there. And it's yes. been there since I was a little girl. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just means spring to me. Yep. Well, y'all are going to be impressed with something I'm going to get Tim to work on next week because I've taken pictures of your gardens and of the ball ground homes, and I did new homes, old homes, homes that need to be remodeled, homes that have been remodeled, and I'm putting it together in a, a package that we're going to show the possibilities because mm. I, as a realtor, I sell homes that are horrible looking and then in two years you go back and you're like, oh my gosh, it's the grandest yes. place in the world because somebody fell in love with ball ground and they moved and you know, I recently sold the Dinsmore house and it's going to be a beautiful historical white home again and mm. I'm so excited about that. Okay. So there's so many people coming in looking at ball ground with a new eye. You know, they're like, yeah, that's mm -hmm. an old house, but mm -hmm. I could turn it into. But look at the homes that they renovated. Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. word, they're beautiful. Awesome. Oh, they're Absolutely. Miss Ethel Humphrey house right across from the um, uh, post office. Mm -hmm. It had the round oh, room. Oh yes, yes, That yes. one, I'm just so glad they saved it's that. Gorgeous. Yes, 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 yes. Gorgeous. yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Beautiful. And for 589000 you can live there. <laughs> oh, okay. is that right? Is that all? Oh, it's come down it's gorgeous. a couple of hours. Yeah. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous, <laughs> yeah. Very it is unique. amazing, the price yeah. of homes. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's a it's great beautiful. time to be a realtor. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here today. Thank I'm you. so glad thank you're here. And y'all, you, you got to come out again June the 12th, and y'all will be back again and remind us maybe 10 days before. Okay. We'll do this again. Um, but please, if you are thinning your gardens and you want to help them, get on their website and and say, hey, I have some stuff I want to give you because the garden will grow when you contribute. So there you That's go. That's right, ballgroundgardenclub.com. There you we go. We have an email, and uh, Jim is the one that monitors that, and we're happy to thin your plants. There you go. <laughs> and if you want to remember somebody who's passed, then uh, the paver is a great way to do that. Sure. So yes, there you go. The bricks. Yes. There you go. In honor of, in memory of, for yep. weddings, for yep. your little puppies or whatever, yes. animals. There you go. There you go. That's covered. We're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. Have a great day, and uh, remember tomorrow morning between the hours of 5 and 10 a.m., we're going to be in a storm situation, so be aware, watch the news, and pay attention to what's going on, guys, because tomorrow's going to be one of those days. Georgia is known for storms, so take care of your family and make plans to um, have a safe place to go. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. You gave me a